many historical artifacts have been lost over time. This applies even if their existence is proven by written documents. Where are they? What happened to them? Are they in an attic somewhere, forgotten and lost for generations? In many cases, it's pure chance that brings these artifacts back to the surface. It rarely takes more than an excavator and a planned construction site to bring ancient ruins, mysterious artifacts, or chilling discoveries back to the world's consciousness. Are you fascinated by mysterious things and archaeological discoveries? Then show us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Hidden Worlds, and join us on our journey. The Vampire Graves in Eastern Europe The cult of vampires has become very popular again. It's hard not to recognize the sheer number of books, films, and series that have depicted bloodsuckers over the years and painted them in the most interesting way. What some are not aware of, however, is that the vampire myth predates modern culture. As early as the Middle Ages, people believed in revenants and were so afraid of them that they were even buried in a specific way. In Eastern Europe in particular, experts repeatedly come across graves during excavations in which the skeletons have been tied up with chains, weighted down with large stones, or staked with pointed sticks. This was to prevent the dead from rising out of the grave after a violent death to attack the villagers. The belief in these vampires continued into the modern era, and the findings are certainly an inspiration for the stories mentioned. The Frankenstein of Scotland Frankenstein is another example of a mythical figure making its way into modern pop culture. In 2001, archaeologists found the skeletons of a man and a woman in a tomb. What they initially thought was an ordinary Bronze Age tomb turned into a horror show when it was discovered that the corpses were a mixture of body parts. The skeletons included bones from six different individuals that were reassembled more or less anatomically correct in the grave. The mummified skeletons are still a mystery to researchers today. It's assumed that they are the bones of an entire family, but why put them together to appear as one person? Was it a ritual or a more macabre tradition? Either way, it was a find that gave archaeologists some troubling thoughts. The Werewolf from the Balkans in Novoselo, Macedonia, a farmer discovered a skull in the attic that bears a striking resemblance to what might be described as the remains of a werewolf. Not only does the dentition and the shape of the head support this idea, but the supposed resemblance to a human skull also indicated this possibility. But did these fairy tale creatures really exist? In the folklore of the region, werewolves arose when people were born again after a serious sin or when they had sympathy with the devil. In this case, it's more likely just the head of a wolf that has suffered from a particular disease that changes the shape of the head and makes the skull look more human. So, on closer inspection, that could be the reason for the traditional stories that have spread, or we might simply be trying to convince ourselves that werewolves don't exist. The Vatican Witch's Tomb The witch hunt in Europe is a historical event that has received comparatively little attention from researchers. It's commonly thought to be most prevalent in America, but archaeologists continue to find evidence that the persecution of women believed to be witches also occurred in Europe. Evidence of this was found in an Italian tomb on the site of a former church. In this case, the skeleton was buried face down, a typical tradition when one feared that the dead person was a witch. While in this case the body was actually buried after death, witch graves have also been found in Europe where the person was thrown face down into a pit and buried alive. A dark chapter in history, and one that hasn't really been completely investigated through to this day. The Stolen Heart of St. Lawrence An artifact believed to be the petrified heart of St. Lawrence was stolen from Dublin's Christ Church Cathedral in 2012. The heart remained missing for six years, and it was already clear from the investigation that the thief seemed to only be interested in this relic, as far more valuable objects in the church, which could have been stolen more easily, remained untouched. An anonymous tip has now led to the stolen goods being found again. The heart was still intact and without damage. Although an attempt was made to find the thief with forensic analysis, the person responsible was never found. In the end, the heart made its way back to the Holy Cathedral, where it was returned to its place in a beautiful ceremony. Bizarre Celtic Tomb 
Even though the Celts dominated parts of Europe for many decades, sometimes centuries, and were the dominant culture in the British Isles in particular, little is known about them today. This is not least due to the fact that writing did not play a major role among these people. The mysteries triggered by the rare finds from Celtic graves are all the greater. The discovery of some skeletons in Dorset, England, which gave the discoverers many a riddle along the way, was particularly bizarre. In a fusion of human and animal bones, it seems like the creation of a beast was the intended purpose here. Such images are also known from the Mediterranean region, where, for example, the harpies play a major role in mythology. To what extent this has to do with the grave in England, and what exactly the reason for this form of burial was, the experts have been unable to uncover to this day. Victim of an Exorcism in England the idea that the devil could take hold of a human being is quite old and existed in other forms even in earlier civilizations. However, it's rare that one could already suspect to see a victim of an exorcism simply by looking at an excavation site. But this is what happened with the find in England, where researchers were already certain from the initial discovery. The man was missing several limbs and had been laid face down in his grave. What was particularly decisive, however, was a hole in his skull that apparently had been purposefully drilled into. We know from records that it was one of the methods priests used to try to expel the devil from the body. Of course, this procedure usually ended fatally for the person treated, and this case was no different. 5,000-year-old prehistoric temple in Scotland Archaeology in the Scottish Islands has uncovered many a story about the Celts and their ancestors in the past. In fact, some of Europe's earliest settlements are believed to have existed here, presumably remnants from a time when the islands were still partially connected to the mainland. As early as 1909, the first discoveries were made on the Isle of Arran that pointed to a prehistoric burial ground. Today it's certain that there must have been a temple here which attracted pilgrims from all over what is now Scotland, and was therefore of great importance to the people of the time. The huge stones that can be found in various places on the island are just one indication that there must have been places of worship here. So far, the excavations have not made much progress, but there are always signs of pilgrims and cemeteries. The island also plays an important role in other Scottish sagas of history. Robert the Bruce is said to have received his mission here to go back to the mainland and face the fight with the English. The Grave of the Last Witch of Scotland In a very different corner of Scotland, experts believe that they have discovered the grave of the person who, according to official records, was the last woman to have been convicted of witchcraft in Scotland. Lilius Addy is said to have been in league with the devil and was first imprisoned for years, then buried behind the walls in an unknown location after her death. Due to investigations and the repositioning of the corpse, it's now believed that the last witch's grave in the country has been discovered. Fortunately, this practice ended in Scotland shortly after, although it continued for many years in other parts of the world. The Ancient Greek Sphere of Deviance as described several times earlier, people believe that it helped to bury bodies in a certain way. Placing heavy stones was also part of this belief and seems to have existed in ancient Greece. From discoveries and records, it's now certain that the Greeks were so afraid of revenants that they sent a considerable number of people weighted down with heavy stones into the grave with them. This practice is shown at various sites in ancient Greece that have now been uncovered. Time and again, people have reported UFOs in the sky and encounters with aliens who allegedly took them onto their spaceship. Many of these claims are, of course, impossible to prove, and even images of supposed spaceships in the night sky not infrequently turn out to be simple searchlights from a helicopter. But does that necessarily mean we're alone in the universe? Mysteriously, in recent years, there have been repeated strange discoveries that are said to be the remains of extraterrestrials. In fact, even experienced scientists have a hard time explaining some of these unbelievable finds. Mysterious Mayan Artifacts In 2012, the Mexican government somewhat surprisingly released a series of interesting Mayan artifacts that had been in their possession for over 80 years and were even declared a state secret. 
These were found in a lost pyramid that was discovered rather accidentally under another pyramid in Kalakmul. The objects, which appear to have existed since the early Maya period, include UFOs and extraterrestrial visitors. Did the Maya immortalize images of beings from another world visiting Earth many years ago? In moving images, the artifacts were to be featured in a government-cleared documentary, but production has since been halted. So far, there has been no scientific proof that the objects found were authentic, but nor has it been possible to prove the opposite. At least the few published images of the alleged alien artifacts from Mexico look impressive. And who knows, maybe one day the truth behind this mysterious find will come to light. Gear of a UFO one day in Vladivostok, a Russian found a strange object that appeared to be part of a machine. It bore a strong resemblance to a gear and was embedded in a piece of coal. After the man removed the item from the coal and examined it more closely, he wanted to proudly present it to his friends. Now, you have to know that discarded components from old machines are not uncommon in Russia, but apparently this gear does not belong to a modern machine at all. Experts who examined the man's find more closely determined that it was made of pure aluminum. Strange, however, that the scientists stated the age of the gear wheel to be 300 million years old. And it was actually only in 1825 that man discovered how to produce aluminum. Rumors quickly spread that the gear belonged to an alien spaceship that landed on Earth a long time ago. However, the scientists do not want to confirm this assumption because they first want to examine the find more closely. The Stone Head from Guatemala During an expedition in the 1930s, explorers in the Guatemalan jungle suddenly discovered a huge stone statue shaped like a face. In addition to the size of the statue, what is particularly interesting is the fact that its facial features do not resemble those of a Mayan or any other human who inhabited the earth at that time. Instead, the elongated skull and the very fine facial features do not portray a human at all. Some researchers are sure that the oversized skull shows a representative of an extraterrestrial species who visited Earth many years ago and had a significantly higher IQ. Accordingly, the indigenous people dedicated this sculpture to him in his honor. It would of course have been very interesting to investigate the origin of the statue using today's research methods, but the stone head was used by troops for target practice and was completely destroyed. Just an unfortunate coincidence or a deliberate cover-up. The Williams Enigmalith In 1998, while hiking, John J. Williams came across a strange rock which he took with him. As he removed the dirt, he noticed that there was a mysterious electrical component on it that, from a purely visual point of view, was reminiscent of a kind of miniature socket. Among UFO fans, the Williams Enigmalith, named after him, has long been regarded as the legacy of visitors from space, although this has not been officially confirmed by scientists. However, Williams himself, an electrical engineer by trade, is absolutely certain that the electrical component was neither glued to the stone by hand nor welded onto it. Instead, the stone appears to have formed around the component. An initial investigation by renowned scientists has already shown that the stone is roughly 100,000 years old and that its inner workings were therefore not created by humans. Williams has so far vehemently refused to have the stone open to examine its inner workings more closely. Instead, he only agrees to scientific investigations if he does not have to pay for the research himself, if he is present and the stone remains intact. During this time, he has tried to sell it for a price of half a million dollars. So far, no buyer has been interested. The Ubaid Lizard People Year after year, archaeologists are drawn to the Al Ubaid site in Iraq, which is considered a magnet for historians. Countless mysterious artifacts from long-forgotten times have been discovered here, but none are as disturbing as the so-called Ubaid lizard people. These are apparently handmade statues, but they do not appear to be based on a human model. Instead, they have a lizard-like shape and a strange elongated head. The unusual posture here also rules out animal-headed deities. Many UFO fans, however, are sure that the strange beings must be some kind of reptilian aliens who roamed the Earth hundreds of thousands of years ago to explore. But can that really be true? As is so often said, the truth is out there somewhere. The Meteor Mask 
The fact that smaller pieces of meteorites regularly fall to Earth is by no means uncommon and actually hardly worth reporting. However, what a local resident found one day in the Kalahari Desert deserves reporting. He discovered a piece of meteorite shaped like a mask, complete with the characteristic facial features and two holes for the eyes. Many meteorite collectors, but also researchers, believe that the mask is an imprint of the face of a human-like being. But how exactly the piece landed in the middle of the desert and who might have shaped it is completely unclear. Meteorites from Sri Lanka Remains of meteorites have also been found in Sri Lanka. However, these do not resemble a mask, but have very special inner workings. Fossilized remains of extraterrestrial aquatic plants were discovered inside them. This means that the plant remains do not come from the Earth, so says scientist Chandra Wickramasinghe, who is absolutely certain of this. According to his statement, critics complained that the meteorite fragments had perhaps been lying on the Earth long enough and had been soiled with freshwater plants. However, they were silenced when another meteorite was discovered in 2012, which had the same aquatic plant residues inside. A contamination by Mother Earth can therefore be absolutely excluded. So, could this magnificent discovery actually be the remains of extraterrestrial life forms? Small Golden Plains The Incas left mankind with numerous extremely mysterious objects. One of the strangest of these is without a doubt the so-called ancient airplanes, which are small golden figures whose appearance is very reminiscent of a modern jet airplane. Apart from the fact that there were of course no airplanes at the time of the Incas, the figures even have features that are reminiscent of the design of fighter planes and the landing gear installed in them. Aviation fans used the figures to recreate model airplanes that were actually able to fly. All of this evidence suggests that the Incas apparently had contact with humans or extraterrestrial beings who had such complex flying machines at their disposal during that time period. Or are the characters simply a very creatively inspired recreation of golden bees, which the Incas worshipped for their honey? Summer's Triumph Summer's Triumph is a world-famous tapestry that was made in the Belgian city of Bruges in 1538 and has been on display in the Bavarian National Museum for many years. However, if you look at this tapestry a little closer, and some people have, you will notice that there are several objects floating in the sky that resemble UFOs. Since the motive on the tapestry depicts a ruler's rise to power, some scholars express the suspicion that the hovering sources are connected to the ruler as a kind of divine intervention. Then, all that would really need to be addressed is how Belgians who lived in the 16th century knew the appearance of a flying saucer. The Bet Sphere Arguably one of the most mysterious mysteries of modern times is a strange sphere owned by the Betts family of the United States. After a major fire destroyed the family's property in 1974 and destroyed more than 35 hectares of land, a later survey of the damage discovered a strange silver sphere, measuring about 20 centimeters in diameter and surprisingly heavy at almost 10 kilos. Although the sphere was in the very center of the fire, it was not destroyed or even damaged in any way. After the sphere had been in the house of the Betts family for many weeks, one day the son of the family spontaneously picked up the guitar to play a little song. Lo and behold, the silver ball then began to vibrate like a tuning fork and played back the individual tones in perfect unison. This sparked the interest of the family, who later made an even more incredible discovery. If you set the sphere in motion on a smooth surface, it remained in motion for more than 10 minutes, only then to return to its exact starting point. In addition, the sphere seemed to feel more comfortable in warmer areas. If you put it in the shade, it automatically tried to roll into the sun. Where the orb where these strange abilities came from is unclear, as is its current whereabouts. While large areas of human history are already well-researched, many finds still pose a mystery. The function of a few of the most astonishing discoveries have not yet been clarified, while others could rewrite the official history of entire countries, and the past still holds more riddles than answers. We've compiled 10 of the strangest finds for you. Beds of Grass and Ashes 
In the Border Cave, a cave in the Lobombo Mountains, South Africa, layers of ash and plant material, predominantly grass, have been found alongside tools and bones. The cave has been the temporary home of indigenous people on and off from 227,000 years ago up until about 1,000 years ago, and provides a site for a very early period of human history. The discovery of the ash and grass layers and their interpretation was made by archaeologist Lynn Wadley of the University of Witwatersrand. She suspects that it's kind of a bed on which not only people slept but also worked, as suggested by traces of tool processing. While a bit of grass with its freshness and softness is still plausible, Radley also has a logical explanation for the layer of ash. Over time, the grass grew musty and bugs took up residence. Instead of clearing out the cave, its interior was burned out and grass was again piled on top of the clean layer of ash. The layers yielded the discovery of two human teeth, dated to just before and just after 200,000 years ago. However, since the dating of teeth is not 100% reliable, it should be considered more of a guide. If the dating is correct, this bedstead would be the oldest human bed ever found, because the next oldest was found in Israel and dates to around 185,000 years ago, and the next one is only a mere 77,000 years old. The top and youngest grass layer is unburned. Wadley assumed that other people subsequently inhabited the cave. Whether the previous inhabitants intentionally used medicinal plants to keep away vermin, as assumed by Wadley, and thus already had a deeper knowledge of plants at that time, or whether the existing medicinal plants were simply a coincidence, still remains unclear. A 48-meter-long pool, 2,300 years old Dating back to the 4th century BC, a pool 48 meters long and 12 meters wide was discovered and excavated 16 kilometers southwest of Rome. It's at least 2,300 years old, and its use is still uncertain. It undoubtedly wasn't used for bathing or swimming, even though its shape has been compared to today's Olympic swimming pools and looks confusingly similar. It likely served as a water reservoir, for example for irrigation in agriculture, perhaps also as a catch basin for sewerage. Its side walls are made of large blocks, mostly tough, and a ramp leads up to the street. Its discovery was unexpected and took place during an archaeological survey that preceded a planned construction site. Neolithic Petroglyphs In the Edekal Cave on the western slope of Alien Mountain, Sri Lanka, Dr. Sumanaratna succeeded in discovering various petroglyphs. They date back to the Neolithic period, around 5500 to 4500 BC and they show various signs and symbols that the doctor attributes to astronomical calculations. For chronological comparison, the Sumerian cuneiform tablets were not written until about 2,000 years later. Latte Stones The latte stones are stone pillars on which a hemisphere of stone rests with the flat side facing upwards. They were used as foundation pillars for buildings, two rows of latte stones on which the floor of the building was then placed. Hence, the building stood elevated, which was an advantage against moisture, floods, and also rodents. In addition, air circulation under the building kept the wooden floor structure dry, which made the house more durable, and an additional covered workspace was created under the house. Latte stones were built by the Chamorro, or Chamaru as they call themselves, on the Mariana Islands in the western North Pacific. Even today, they are closely associated with the culture, as they are still placed in gardens or important locations. In archaeology, the latte stones, which vary greatly in size, even serve as an important aid in dating locations. To this day, their unusual composition of hemisphere and pillar remains unexplained in its purpose. Possibly it served as a buffer during earthquakes, but this is only one theory. Massive Lion Statue In Cambodia, in Phnom Penh, near the famous Wat Phnom Temple, a massive lion statue was discovered during drainage relocations. It was broken in two and is slightly thicker and bigger than a real lion, but otherwise very similar. Its age remains a mystery to this day, as it was found without any context. Archaeological discoveries are usually dated by accompanying objects, but the lion was found completely alone. Possibly it's as old as the temple itself. Because of its size, it's assumed that it belonged to a larger structure and was or should have been part of a bridge. 
Investigations are pending. Its mystery may someday still be solved. The stone monuments on the summit on Cerro de la Peña Hidden on the summit of Cerro de la Peña in southeastern Mexico, near the village of Puebla, two stone stele and 87 glyphs cut in stone were found. They belong to a whole complex of ceremonial structures that include seven pyramids, a ball court, some temples, and the houses of leaders. The stele were likely cut by the Zapotec or Teotihuacan and roughly date to 500 BC. Based on the images, it could be that they were dedicated to the god of the underworld. The better preserved steel shows a person with horns wearing a loincloth. Other stones show images of iguanas, an eagle, and a bat deity. So much is still undiscovered and unexplored at this particular site that the find is nothing but puzzling. Its remoteness does not make it easy to explore, as the mountain top can only be reached by a narrow, rocky, and tiringly steep path. The Kilwa coin changes its story. The discovery of a single coin calls into question the history of an entire continent. The Kilwa coin from Australia. Corresponding coins like this one originate from Kilwa, Tanzania, and should not be found on the Australian Wessel Islands. And yet it was found there, and dates back to the 15th century. The likelihood that it arrived on the continent only after James Cook's official discovery in 1770 shrank when it became known that more of its kind had been found. 40 to 60,000 years ago, the Aboriginals settled in Australia. It wasn't until much later that the first white men discovered the continent, but they were unaware of the land they were entering. The first official white guest was a Dutch navigator who set foot on the Cape York Peninsula in Queensland in 1606. His compatriot, Dirk Hartog, followed a few years later. The Torres Strait was discovered a little later by Spaniard Luis Vélez de Torres and was named after him. And by 1550, 56 years earlier, the Portuguese were in Timor, just three days' journey away and easily reached by monsoon winds. The likelihood that Portuguese sailors also set foot in Australia can be considered high, although there are no confirmed reports of this. In 1944, five more Kilwa coins were found in the Northern Territory, but their discovery did not become known until about 40 years later. They date to an approximate age of 1,000 years. The big question is, were the coins in the luggage of the people who entered the continent, and if so, where did these people come from? Were they seafarers from Tanzania or from Portugal? Or did the sea play tricks on archaeologists, washing them ashore on the Australian coast? The fact is, James Cook was the first explorer who was aware that he was entering unknown territory in Australia. The Hellfire Caves Called Hellfire or West Wycombe Caves, the passages are artificial caverns that extend some 400 meters underground. They were cut in chalk and flint and dug by Francis Dashwood from 1748 to 1752 to serve his pagan meetings. Dashwood was co-founder of the Hellfire Club, whose meetings in the caves coined their name. The caves consist of a network of passageways connecting various main caverns and smaller chambers, including Steward's Hall, which was a banquet hall, and the Inner Temple, a chamber into which the passageway opens. Its front was designed in the style of Gothic churches, and it was used for the club's humid gatherings. The cave has been open to the public since 1951, but it has been considered a tourist attraction since 1863. Also ironically, St. Lawrence and its subsequent mausoleum above the caverns were also built by Dashwood. Ancient Windmills Nashtafan is home to some amazing structures. They are 1,000-year-old windmills that continue to operate unabated. They were built of mud, straw and wood, and the windmills continue to turn today. Unfortunately, their future is uncertain due to the lack of care to maintain them. Sunken Shipwrecks The inconceivable amount of 10,000 shipwrecks lies off the coast of Nova Scotia. For a short time, salvage or evaluation by the government was considered, but the idea was discarded. Even the discovery of the Le Chameau in 1965, a French ship that sank in 1725 with a treasure trove of gold coins valued at about half a million dollars did not sway them. Today, piracy is on the rise. Pirate divers swim through wrecks and rob them of their treasures, and even worse for history and archaeology, they go undocumented. 
all the mysteries of history will likely never be completely explained. For the remainder, the meaning or purpose could be gradually deduced. What do you think the large pool was used for? And what's your take on the shipwrecks? Should treasures become lost forever because the government won't recover them? Or should private treasure hunters be allowed to legally seek these riches? We look forward to reading your opinions in the comments.